guys and welcome, I'm Infancia and in this new series I'm gonna learn how to model UV unwrap and most importantly hand paint textures. So in my 100 episodes of the 10 minute modeling challenge I'm used to doing the quick palette based UV unwrapping that we're all so familiar with but I'm gonna learn how to hand paint them and I know that takes significantly longer to do and on top of that I'm gonna learn how to use a tablet so I've got a 2017 Wacom Intuos Pro Medium here with a pen that I hardly know how to use so it's gonna be awkward for me but I'm gonna do it and we'll make a chest in this first episode and let's learn it together shall we <laughs> let's get started I've opened a new scene in Blender 3.2 with no external add-ons except screencast keys to show what I'm doing. I have enabled emulate 3 button mouse in preferences so I can use the pen to rotate, zoom and pan the viewport with alt, control and shift keys. Just like I did my 10 minute modeling series I use a lot of E to extrude and S to scale to create the chest model. By adding loop cuts with control R followed by a numeric key to say how many cuts you want I add two loop cuts in all axes. This way I can enable proportional editing with the O key to deform the chest and make it more interesting. This adds some geometry, so if the poly count is a concern, you can make fewer cuts. I model the top of the chest as separate geometry because I probably want to be able to open it in the game to get some exciting loot out of it. The lock and hinges I'm also doing as separate geometry. I copy the face with Shift D and then I scale, extrude and shape it. All the details will be added when the texture is painted. I bevel some of the edges with Ctrl B to give the model some slanted edges to reflect the light. It also gives the chest a stylized and dented, worn look. You can also bevel some individual vertices with Ctrl Shift B. I decided to extrude some individual planks on the lid for a cartoon-like style. In the final moments of modeling, I tweak some vertices, either with or without proportional editing, to get more surfaces for the light to bounce off and make it less uniform. That's it for the modeling, it took exactly 10 minutes and since I did not use my normal coloring method I could spend a few extra moments on working on the mesh itself. Before we go into UV unwrapping and texture painting I want to mention that I've been speaking to gamedev.tv recently and I'm excited to hopefully create some courses with them in the near future. You may know some of the instructors there, one of them is Grant Abbott who's been creating great Blender content for years. Even though my courses may be a while away, I can already now give you a sweet package deal on three existing courses that I've handpicked especially for my audience. The three courses are the Unreal Engine 5 Blueprints First Person Shooter by Steven Ulibarri, the Complete C Sharp Unity Developer 3D Online course by Rick Davidson, and the Blender Character Creator version 2.0 for Video Games Design course by Grant Abbott. Use the affiliate link in the description to get 85% off the original price. Not only do you get a great deal, but you also help my channel as I earn a commission. Now we're going to UV unwrap this chest. In the next video I will take more care to add seams manually and unwrap the model to save some precious texturing space. I could have overlapped the wood sections on this chest along the short and long ends, and some of the other details could have been connected to save some unused texture space. In this first attempt, I'm going for the quick route of using Smart UV Project. I use the default angle, but I change the padding to 0.03. It's important to have padding between your UV islands, and we'll be adding a bleed offset when we paint the texture, so Blender adds pixels well outside the UV island. Why would you do that? <laughs> you might say. And it's because when you resize a texture down to a smaller size, which the graphic card actually does by itself when it's using something called MIP mapping for distant objects, you will get artifacts and nasty edges if you don't have enough pixels surrounding the UV island. A UV island, by the way, it's not an island in the ocean with a hole in the ozone layer above it to blast you with UV rays. It's the area of one or more faces of your mesh where they're folded out onto a flat 2D surface suitable to be painted on. UV is the name of the axis, sort of like X and Y, but for the texture. It's called U and V instead, not to confuse it with the X, Y, Z axis of your 3D space. That's it. That's the lazy man's UV unwrapping where you waste precious texture space to gain speed. This took 5 seconds to do, and manually unwrapping may take 5 to 20 minutes, so you should strongly consider doing that if you have the time. In all my previous low poly work I've always used flat shading. That has been my style and it goes really well with the palette based colouring techniques we're familiar with. Flat shading gives flat surfaces instead of smooth out, curved looking surfaces. I select all the faces and I change them from the default flat shading to smooth shading. 
As you can see, it makes the model look like a pile of so we need to define sharp edges where needed. This is a manual process, so I select edges where I want to make them sharp. Hold shift to add more edges to the selection. And since I'm now using emulate a three button mouse to use my pen tablet, holding alt to loop select no longer works. With that setting, you can instead double click on the edges to loop select. And in my tablet app, I have set to simulate a double click with the upper pen button. I tried different methods to select edges and I think I can speed up this with some experience. Maybe through selecting edges based on angle because it's only the sharp edges that I want to make sharp. All the flat edges need to be smooth so I can get nice rounded surfaces, for example on the curved metal bands on the lid. For Mark Sharp to work you will need to go to the vertex properties for all vertices and enable auto smooth under normals with a value of 180 degrees. Remember this in the future if Mark Sharp has no effect. Once the correct edges have been marked as sharp, the chest gets a nice smooth look where needed, as well as nice sharp edges. I really like this look, even if I'm far away from my comfort zone as a flat surfacer. Not earther, surfacer. The time has arrived when we're going to turn this grey mesh into this nice textured chest. First I have to go to the texture painting tab and go to the material. I change the base color to an image texture and I create a new texture. I leave the resolution at 1024 as this chest is low poly and it's going to be viewed from a distance. I could probably have gotten away with 512 by 512 if I would have unwrapped it a little bit better. Most of this chest will be grey material so I set my base color as grey and I won't need transparency so I'll disable that. I've done some testing before this video but these are my first days when it comes to learning how to paint textures. I have watched some YouTube videos on this and search for hand painted textures to find some of them. You can also find some links in the description. As I practice and watch others, I'm picking up some really important things that I want to share with you, so make sure you keep watching. First I create a new palette with the colors I want to use. I add some different grey colors for the metal parts by changing the color and brightness and clicking the little plus button to add them to the palette. For darker greys I go towards a cooler blue hue and for brighter greys I go towards a warmer yellow shade. We also need some wood colors for the chest. I pick darker orange colors right between the yellow and red hues on the color wheel. For darker wood colors I head towards red and for brighter wood colors I go towards yellow again. Finally I want to make the lock gold colored so I add a few shades of orange again with some hue and light shifts. Now it's also important to set the bleed value under options. This is what tells Blender to add additional paint outside the UV island so downscaling textures won't become a problem. I'm setting the bleed to 8 pixels to make sure that the texture can be scaled down all the way to 64 by 64 pixels without problems. I start by filling in the base colors. To do this I use masking to select faces that I want the paint to affect. Make sure you enable the paint mask button at the top. In the texture paint mode you can quickly press the A key twice to mask out all faces. Then I press shift L while hovering over the separate lock mesh to unmask it. Masked away areas are shaded white and they won't be affected when you paint. I change to the fill tool and set my color to orange in the palette and then I fill the lock to orange. I mask the hinges and I color them a darker gray to break up the colors a bit. If you need to mask multiple faces it's best to press tab and toggle into edit mode so you can use all the face selection methods and then tab back into the texture painting mode. I select all the faces on the mesh that should be wood colored and then I use the fill tool to fill it with a mid-tone brown color from the palette. I won't pay much attention to the interior, so I'll just fill that one with a very dark wood color. Remember, save your image by going to Image, Save As and give it a name. I also go to File, External Data, Automatically Pack Resources, but that will only include copies of a saved texture, so it won't replace the previous step to save the image. If you need to enable one or a few faces, you can do that in the texture painting mode. Hold shift and click on the face to toggle masking. You can also use the A key or double clicking on the A key to toggle all or none. I use masking quite a bit when I paint textures to avoid affecting the wrong faces. For example, I don't want my woodwork to affect my metal, so I mask the metal out. 
Some people I've seen start by adding a fake ambient occlusion pass by shading interior corner edges. I have decided to add that pass later so I can paint my texture first and then darken everything at the same time. My first choice for this chest was to paint the wood plank edges. Press F to change the scale of the brush down and then I manually paint where I want the planks to be. I don't want to use the line tool because I want a more natural wood look, so my shaky hands are actually useful for a change. I stay with the wood and I increase the brush size with the F key. I still mask the wood areas, but most often directly in the texture painting mode by shift clicking and toggling face masking. I've been playing Fortnite again with my kids and their simplistic approach to solid colors and form really inspire me. I wish that Blender had a polygon marquee for custom area masking, but it doesn't, so we're restricted to how the paintbrush works. I know you can use texture masking, but that's not really what I'm after in this case. I use the brush to add solid areas of a different wood shade color. The pen is pressure sensitive, so I use that for some variation. I do this pass for all wood areas before moving on. Instead of doing one detailed side first, it could be difficult to remember all the steps to get that result, so it's easier to do one pass everywhere first, even though it can feel a little bit repetitive. Time for Epiphany 1. It is okay for it to look horrible at this stage. You may look at what you've just painted and think, that's awful. <laughs> but I'm learning that that is okay. It will come together later on. Trust me, allow it to look bad for a significant amount of time. I do a third pass on all wooden areas to make a darker shade. I try to do it streaky in some places and blotchy in some. I'm not using a reference myself, but feel free to do so if necessary. When you zoom out, the wood starts to look a little bit okay from a distance. I purposely don't use the smear brush for wood. I tried that and it can look great and more natural, but I wanted the look of the larger, solid colored areas, again similar to what I've seen when I'm playing Fortnite. To finish off the wood, I do one darker pass again with a thin brush. Remember, F scales the brush and Shift F changes the opacity or pressure. For the darker notches and broken or rotted areas, I do some more swirly lines. The final step for my wood is to add some fake highlights. I change my brush from mix to overlay and I select a lighter color from the palette. With a small brush, I overlay thin lines where I imagined the overhead light would hit. That would be on the upper side of the planks and the lower side of notches and cracks. For the top of the chest, I highlight both edges of the planks and notches. I move on to the metal and I start with selecting metal faces to mask. I press L to select linked and at the bottom pop-up window, I've changed select linked method to sharp. You can use different methods to help selecting faces. When I have selected all the metal faces, I don't want to have to do it again, so I go to the Vertex Property tab and I create a new vertex group that I call Metal. I assign my current selection to this vertex group. In the future, I can come back here and click to select the vertex group, which restores this selection. I select a brighter color and I change my brush blend mode to screen. I go over all the pointy edges with this brush. I find it easier to draw horizontal lines. My brain is throwing curveballs as I try to do vertical lines, so I hope I can improve on this with some practice. You can always press Ctrl Z and draw it again and again and again. I brighten the bevel edges more and I'm imagining this to be shiny and worn areas of the metal. This could also be done by baking curvature maps, but I want to go all in hand painted at this point, as I feel that the bake maps always tend to look recognizable as baked. Remember when I said allow it to look horrible? I keep faith in that principle, especially during this stage. It took me a few minutes in real time, but finally I had passed all the pointy edges with my screen highlighting brush. Remember to save the texture every now and then. This chest was not cast in a single piece, and I don't have the geometry to support the additional seams of the metal pieces. I use a dark color with a mix blend mode, and I paint in some lines where I feel the metal should be separated. I go back to a bright color, you can press the S key while you hover over a color on your mesh to sample it or select that color. Similar to the manual curvature pass, I draw highlights on both sides of the darker metal lines. 
you'll find that you'll miss places, so you'll have to go back and repeat later on. I forgot the chest lid and I had to come back and do that thing again. It's time to add the fake ambient occlusion. I increase the brush size with F and I use Shift F to lower the opacity. With a dark color, I go all over the interior edges where I feel less light would hit. This would be around the indented interior edges where the metal joins the wood. I prefer to do this ambient occlusion pass after I've done most of the coloring, so I can darken all areas equally at once. Again, do this everywhere at the same time so you don't have to keep changing the brush or remember your settings. For the indented wood parts on the lid, I went quite dark to add some contrast and make the planks stick out a little bit more. I'm also shading the areas around the metal bands for some fake shadows. In a great video by CG Cookie where he hand paints an axe, link in the description, I noticed that he added these bright lines for a hammered metal look, so I'm trying something similar. It's a bit tedious to do, but it helps to give the texture a more interesting look. After that I use a screen brush with a bright color to brighten some of the cells, and I use a dark color with a multiply blend mode to darken some of the cells. To make the chest look older and more beaten up, I use a dark color with a mix blend mode to paint some cracks and cuts. I use a brighter color on the lower half of the indentations to fake light catching it. I move on to the lock and mask it out just like before. I use a brighter orange with the add blend mode to brighten up the edges. With a dark orange and a multiply blend mode, I shade the interior edges again for some fake ambient occlusion. I have no clue how to paint gold yet, this is my first attempt, so I'm trying some diagonal lines to brighten up something like a reflection. And I change to a darker orange with a color burn blend mode for some more saturation and contrast. For the keyhole, I change the fall off of the brush to have sharp edges. I pick a dark color and I set the opacity to 1 with Shift F. Then I just paint the keyhole manually. I use a smaller brush with a bright color and the overlay blend mode to brighten the edges. I'm adding some faint orange to the surrounding iron parts to simulate that the shiny gold is reflected. I repeat pretty much the same process for the hinges, but with darker metal colors instead. I fake some curvature on the hinges with a swipe of a highlight at the top and then a shadow line below. I want to add a gradient pass to the chest so it appears that it's lighter towards the top and darker towards the bottom. Under options in the brush settings, you can disable occlude and backface culling. This is very useful, but also very dangerous because you will forget this and hopefully you'll catch it before you've done some irreparable damage. Disabling occlude and backface culling allows you to paint through the mesh. I'm using this with a large transparent brush and a dark color in multiply blend mode to darken the bottom of the chest. And then, 10 seconds later, I already forgot that occlude and backface culling shoot through the mesh, so I accidentally brighten the bottom half as I tried to brighten the top part. You live and learn. But apparently you don't learn fast enough, because then I still forgot to enable occlude and backface culling, so when I started to paint in the rivets, I also messed up the other side of the chest. So I had to press Ctrl Z as far back as I could and repair what I could not undo. Blender does not have layers like 3D Coat or Photoshop or Substance Painter, so whatever you paint in Blender is destructive. That's quite a big limitation, but I somehow feel that it's okay too because you'll focus on not doing anything too advanced. I do another attempt to add my rivets and after darkening where those go, I did a final pass with some fake highlights on the upper half of the rivets. My very last change to this texture was to darken some of the lines between my planks of wood. I used a small multiply brush with a dark color to make the lines stand out a little bit more. I didn't do anything fancy with the material, but I did create one more white texture that I plugged into the roughness node in the material editor. I recalled my previous named metal vertex group selection and I filled the metal parts with a dark color. This way, the material will lower the roughness on the metal parts to make them more shiny. That was a lot to go through in this video, and it's actually cut down from three hours worth of footage, so thanks to my patrons, and I'm gonna be uploading the unedited version of this one to my Patreon page, so I'll talk through the entire process, and I actually did the chest in 10 minutes, just like a traditional 10 minute modeling challenge. So head over to my Patreon page and consider being a patron, that would help me out a lot as well. So thanks a lot, and uh, take care, and I'll see you soon again. Bye for now.